there is probably more drill types of drill bits available for your drill than there are accessories for any other handheld power tool. Uh, that stands to reason since drills have been around since uh, uh, 1898, electric drills that is, and uh, uh, we've had uh, over a century to develop all sorts of things for them. However, you'll find <clears throat> that most woodworkers really only use six different types of drill bits. Now let me step out here I'm, uh, and change the angle on a cheat sheet. I have a little outline over there that I need to, that I need to read from time to time to make sure that I'm follow, that, that Drew and I are following the same, uh, the same uh, uh, script. Okay. Uh, the drill bits that you're most likely to come in contact with when you're, uh, when you're working wood are first of all twist bits, brad point bits, spade bits, boring bits, Forstner bits, multi-spur bits. Uh, these, if you want to go to graphic number two, it shows you the, uh, the difference between these, these bits. Uh, but first of all, let me, let me uh, point out the, the uh, parts of the bit so we all have the same terminology here. I'll use the Forstner bit. Uh, on your uh, blackboard, you'll see number one is the shank. Uh, the, uh, this is the part that is inserted into the collet, and it has to be kept absolutely perfectly clean. This one actually needs a little cleaning before you can use it, uh, so, so that the uh, three jaws can grip it tight. The uh, body, or number two on your graphic, is, the, uh, uh, is what extends the uh, bit out so you can, do a, uh, you can bore to a certain depth. The longer the, uh, the, longer the body, uh, the farther or the deeper you can make the hole. All the cutting takes place at the tip, uh, which is uh, number three. Uh, here on this particular uh, uh, bit, you're going to find some lips. These lips are what does the cutting. Uh, there's a, that's, that's the sharp part. Uh, and uh, this bit also has a spur that uh, scribes the circumference of the hole and makes uh, uh, smooth, uh, smooth uh, sides to the hole. The spur is number six, and number five, just to go backwards here for a minute, is the lead point. The lead point helps guide the bit into the wood and keeps it going straight. Uh, this particular bit also has lifting faces, two of them. Uh, these lifts the chips uh, out of the, of the hole on a, a brad point bit or a, um, uh, a twist bit, these, these uh, lifters are actually spiraled and they're, they're called flutes. Um, the, uh, uh, let's take these bits one at a time and let me discuss what is the best use, what is uh, the best use for each of them. First of all, we're gonna talk about the twist bit. Uh, the twist bit is what most of us started woodworking with. It's, uh, um, it's a uh, good uh, general hole poker if you need to poke a hole. It does not cut uh, very, smooth hole, very smooth holes in wood. We'll talk about that in a little bit why. Um, but it, uh, it, it's good for uh, a lot of reasons and not the least of which is twist bits are available in many, many, many different sizes. Uh, you can uh, get them in uh, fractional sizes, in 64ths of an inch, decimal sizes, and American wire gauge sizes. Those are the bits that you see that are lettered A, B, C, D. Um, the, uh, so you can, you, with a, a good set of twist bits, you can make holes to almost any different uh, size that you, that you need. Uh, they come in three lengths. The length that you're most likely to find in a hardware store is the jobber length, and this is a jobber bit. But you can get extended bits. 
to poke uh, longer holes if you need to. And these bits can come extended up to about 24 inches. Uh, those are very handy uh, sometimes if you're, if you're running wires through uh, a wall or, or uh, need to cut a very, very deep hole. Um, the, uh, the short bits are called stub bits. I don't have any here because those aren't for woodworking. Those are for, me about for uh, uh, metal working. Which is, uh, uh, which is something, uh, which brings me to something that you need to know about these twist bits uh, and why they don't necessarily make a smooth hole in wood. Twist bits come to you with the tip sharpened at about 118 degrees. That's a, uh, if I were to line up my hands parallel to the, uh, to the bit, uh, that's, that's 118 degrees. That's a great, um, uh, for, for uh, drilling metal, it is not necessarily very good for, for drilling wood. If you really wanted to, uh, uh, to uh, modify this twist bit so it was good for wood, you should take it out to 90 degrees, like as shown um, in graphic number four. Uh, gra uh, if you wanted to do plastic, uh, you should take it to 60 degrees. The, um, uh, and, and really, if you, I, you can do wood with the 118 degrees, but I would be very careful about doing plastic with it. I, you can buy these twist bits fairly readily from some catalogs in the 60 degrees for, for, uh, for plastics. <coughs> the, uh, the brad point bits is probably the bit that is, is most generally used uh, in, in woodworking. It, uh, it comes in uh, 16th inch increments, although you can find them in 32nd of an inch if you, if you look around. Uh, it has a spur on the end uh, so that it, 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 scribes a, uh, it scribes the hole before it cuts. It makes a very clean entrance, very clean. Um, and it has a lead point on it so that uh, it, it uh, creates a little a cone and follows this cone in and stays very, very straight in the hole. The lead point also makes it easy to line up with a, with a mark when you're, uh, when you're about to, uh, uh, to drill a hole. Uh, the, uh, uh, they can be used for plastic, but not for metal. Uh, they, uh, uh, the, the, the smaller ones, like this uh, little 3 16 inch bit, will drift on you, and you have to be, you have to be careful uh, on that because what happens is this tip will hit a hard part of the wood. For example, this dark part in the grain here is, is summer wood, and that's denser than this light part, which is spring wood. And if I were to bring this down uh, on the drill bit and hit the summer wood, this bit would be deflected sideways into the spring wood. Now, if, I'm, if, I, if I stop right there and resist plunging the hole, this, this tip will slowly walk back the tension on the on the it will walk back to where I want the hole to be, and then I can go. So that that the uh, when using the uh, the smaller the smaller uh, gauges of brad point bits, let the tip make contact. Wait a second, and then and then uh, uh, plunge your hole. Uh, another another tip you might like about brad point bits is in um, in making clean holes entering and exiting. Uh, if you drill in and you can set your depth stop uh, so that just the tip exits the other side of the board, okay, turn the board over, use that little tiny hole to locate, to locate the, the bit in the, other, in the other side and then plunge in. In other words, you're cutting the hole from both sides. That makes a clean entrance on both sides, and it looks like you have a clean entrance and a clean exit. The other thing, of course, to, it to do is to back up the uh, uh, is to back up the wood when you're when you're drilling with these uh, bits. But sometimes you can't uh, you can't always do that. Spade bits. These are used mostly in in uh, rough carpentry. Uh, they bore holes very very quickly. They scrape away the wood rather than rather than cut it. Uh, this particular spade bit has some spurs on it so that it, uh, y it uh, will uh, cut a smoother hole than most, than most spade bits. Um, the, uh, they aren't used too much in fine woodworking, 
Uh, they're they're generally in construction a bit, and you can get them in in extended in extended lengths like this uh, uh, 18 inch long uh, drill bit here. But spade bits do have some some uses, and that is when you when you need a specially shaped hole, you can actually grind these. I have here a, um, a couple of spade bits that I've ground. Okay, this. Uh, spade bit. Uh, I'll try to show this so you can see it. I ground this to a taper. See that? Uh, it's a 7 inch, 8 inch spade bit. I ground it to a taper so that it will make a, uh, a tapered hole. This is great for if you're doing candle stands. Um, this spade bit over here, let me, uh, let me get this apart and show you. I ground so that I could make rosettes. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, there's the bit that I ground. I took a 1 and 3 8 inch spade bit and ground a profile on the same side so that it would cut this little rosette. Pretty neat, huh? You can, do, you can make your own special, uh, own special shapes. All it takes is a little patience. It's not that hard. All right. Let's move on to boring bits. Clear out all these bits here. We're getting we're getting overloaded with bits. Okay. Boring bit is also scrapes like a spade bit, but it has lifters and it and it uh, cleans out the wood a little bit more effectively than uh, than the spade bits do. Um, these aren't found uh, too much in America. We use them here for uh, mostly installing hardware. They're much more common in Europe. And you can get them in all sorts of lengths over there, and all sorts of uh, or all sorts of uh, diameters. Uh, here, uh, you have to you have to look, and you'll find them in some specialty ca uh, catalogs. They are they are great for boring quick holes. They work very very fast, and of course they work good for for what what you we use them for mostly over here, which is uh, installing hardware. Um, the um, the next bit is the Forstner bit. This bit is configured so that you have a, uh, a tip here, uh, a lead point that, uh, that guides the bit. You have lips and lifters, which cut a very smooth bottom, except for that tiny little hole left by the lead point. And then you have these spurs that are uh, uh, not really spurs, but they're called, they're extended rims, they're called cutting rims. And these actually slice the wood and make a very, very smooth cut when they're sharp um, on, the, uh, on the sides of, of the hole. They're, they're great for uh, boring, when you have to bore smooth decorative holes that you don't want to have to reach inside and sand. The problem is, is that the larger the Forstner bit is, uh, the slower the drill has to run, and uh, much beyond an inch and a half, you really don't want to run them on the Mark V. You really need something that goes around 300 RPM. The Mark V only goes down to about 500 RPM. Uh, so, um, so, so I would wouldn't invest in a in a Forstner bit that goes much uh, much beyond that. Also, these are not great for boring end grain. Uh, they will heat up much too fast. And you could actually ruin the Forstner bit if you tried to do end grain. Um, the, uh, if you want to do end grain, I would go back into your spade bits. If you want to go larger, I would go to a multi-spur bit. A multi-spur bit is configured almost exactly like a, uh, a Forstner bit, except for the fact that the cutting rims now have saw teeth on them. And these, uh, these are much more effective for cutting large diameter holes. Um, so if uh, over an inch and a half, uh, if you're going to use it on the Mark V, go to your multi-spur bits. Now, in addition to what I've just shown you, there are loads of other bits. And I'm going to show you a few, uh, a few right now. I've got a, a few in this, uh, in this box and, uh, and here on this uh, carousel. Um, of course, there's the hole saw. Um, this is this is uh, really um, one of your best choices if, if you're going to do uh, large holes. Um, the
there is uh, uh, the, uh, the countersink. Often you need to, to cut a, uh, uh, a hole or, or, a, or make a, uh, a countersink for a screw head. You can also find these in different angles. A uh, quick tip on using countersinks. If you, if you take, <coughs> if the countersink is chattering in the wood and cutting what looks to be a, um, a, uh, a pentagon shape, uh, put, just tear a, pe a little tiny piece of paper towel and put the paper towel between the countersink and the, um, and the countersink you're trying to cut in the wood, and that will smooth things out. Uh, in addition to, uh, uh, to countersinks, you have uh, counter bores. Uh, these are, are bits which have, are actually two uh, different uh, diameters. The lead uh, point is, a, um, is one diameter, and then uh, the, uh, the, the body of the bit or the, is, the, is, the, is another diameter. When you, when you plunge this into the wood, they cut, they cut a, um, a shaft hole for a screw and then a counter bore for the screw head. Um, very handy sometimes. You, you often get these uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, pocket screw jigs. The, um, uh, in addition to the, uh, the counter bores, here's a plug cutter. Uh, th this, this will actually cut plugs from pieces of scrap wood that you can then put in the counter bores that you made with this bit so that you can uh, uh, plug the screw heads and completely cover them. We use these all the time. You should be not, not without a set of these things. I will tell you, though, that, um, that make sure that the plug cutter set that you have is matched to the next set that, that I'm going to tell you about, which is screw drills. Uh, screw drills are nice because they cut uh, both the countersink, which is the angled part, the counter bore, and the shaft hole all at one time. Really, really a, a, a time saver. Uh, this particular, um, this particular screw drill has a tapered, um, a tapered body, uh, and uh, the they uh, they uh, ballyhoo this in the catalogs and say that it's tapered to match the screws, which is uh, baloney. Uh, if you really look at a screw, you'll find out that they are not tapered. They actually have a straight shank, and then they come to a point right at the very end. Uh, but nonetheless, somebody thought it would be neat to make, uh, uh, to make uh, these uh, uh, tapered twist bits so that if you broke one, you'd have to buy an expensive bit rather than, the, uh, than just going and getting a new twist bit. Uh, you heard it here, folks. If you break one of these, just go and get a twist bit. It'll do the same job for you. Um, the, uh, if you use this to cut your screw hole and, and it will cut a counter bore that is of a certain diameter. Uh, the counter bores on, uh, on most of these bits are either 3 8 or 1 half inch. So you need a 3 8 and a 1 half inch plug cutter uh, to match them. Uh, on the cheaper screw drills, be careful, you can get 5 16 inch counter bores and it's, it's really hard to find a 5 16 inch plug cutter. Um, the, uh, in addition to, to the plug cutters, this is a tenon cutter. Uh, they come in all sorts of different sizes, and these will cut tenons right on the ends of, of boards. Really easy to use these on the Mark V because you've got a horizontal boring mode. You've got... Um, uh, a cutting rim, which cuts your tenon. Your tenon goes up into that hole there. And then you've got these, these uh, lips and lifting faces that cut a flat surface. And so, so they give your tenon a shoulder. Uh, really nice if you're into chair making. Cut absolutely uh, precise tenons, and uh, there's, there's absolutely no turning or measuring needed. All right. With all that stuff, how do you keep them organized? <laughs> all right, right here. This is uh, a carousel. Um, it, uh, I've drilled all sorts of holes in here. It holds the stuff that I use most often. 
Uh, in the carousel, I've got a um, something that'll hold my uh, twist bits uh, because the twist bits come in so many different sizes. Then I've poked holes for everything else. If you go to graphic number five on uh, on your screen. Graphic number five is actually much bigger than it appears on your screen. Right click on that and hit save picture as. And uh, say carousel or wherever, save the picture. And you can print that out up to uh, about uh, 11 by 17. And it's a plan for making, for making this storage carousel for all your bits. I love this. I, t I tell you, it saves so many steps. It saves rummaging around in drawers, and it's a great place to help organize all, all, all your bits. And that's all I have to say about that. Going over here to the um, uh, laptop, hit and refresh, and uh, seeing uh, if you guys got any questions about uh, drills or drill bits. While I'm waiting, I uh, want to say uh, thank you for uh, participating. Uh, I want to also say that this is, we are still in the experimental phase of hands online, our sawdust sessions and our uh, hands on classrooms. We're pushing this technology like it's never been pushed before. Um, and uh, we apologize for making you guys the guinea pigs, but we're hoping you benefit from it. Uh, and we beg you to please be patient and if you see technical problems on your end, please tell us about them, okay? Yeah. Uh, can you talk, uh, Scott wants to know, can you talk about the dollars you spend on drill bits? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the dollars you spend on drill bits. Okay. Whenever somebody asks me about buying an accessory for a power tool, I tell them this little homily. A, a $50 table saw with a $100 table, uh, 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 table or saw blade is going to cut one heck of a lot better than a $100 table saw with a $50 saw blade. Uh, if you, in other words, folks, this is the important part of the tool, okay? This is where you spend your bucks and you, and you invest in your quality. Um, drills drills uh, come and go. I mean, you've got drills out there now that look like, uh, that look like gym shoes and uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, cut pretty good. I don't know how long it's going to be until you want to upgrade to the next fashion. I don't know, maybe we'll have clear drills uh, pretty soon. But uh, uh, spend your money in good drill bits. The drill, the the uh, those old uh, uh, cordless drills, you'll be going through a lot of those in your woodworking lifetime. Uh, the drill bits, you should invest in those like they're going to last forever, and they will.